All right now. <laughs> yeah. Here we go. Slow down. You move too fast. You've got to make the morning last. Just kicking down the cobblestones, looking for fun. Life. Yes. So knowing that who we are and what we're about. It's not something we have to make happen. It's life itself being the very power and energy of what we're doing. So we know that and we teach that and we, we bring that forward. This is a center that honors and recognizes you for who you are and everything we know of you and everything that, that you know of yourself. Celebrate your your understanding. We celebrate your um, uh, names for yourself, your, your labels that we all put on ourselves of various kinds, having to do with age, race, all those ethical, ethical and ethnical uh, categories that we So that, that is the, uh, um, the truth of you and is the truth that we recognize. So I'm knowing that and I'm knowing that on your behalf. To know more about who we are and what we believe and what we teach, here is uh, some information on our, um, our
I believe. I believe. I believe in one God. One absolute power and first cause to all things. I believe that this power is perfect love. And creates out of a desire to express love. I believe all thought is creative and how I choose to think creates my personal experience. I believe in the unity of all life and the immortality of the individual soul. Forever unfolding. I believe. I believe. I believe in the eternal goodness. The eternal goodness of God. The eternal loving kindness. And the eternal givingness of God to all. And so it is. And so it is. And so it is. Folks, some of those folks you heard were people who are trained in this teaching to do themselves as well as other people and who are prepared to support one others in, in creating this. Today, you both some thoughts. That is Judy Ailey. Welcome, Judy. Thank you, Dr. Bob. All right, welcome everybody. It's so nice to know that, that we have a group that is gathered in person this morning and that also through the miracle of technology that we welcome all who are viewing us online around this country of ours and indeed around the entire globe. This Sunday, we continue our discussion topic for May, which has been focused on emotions. Well, today's talk is, if you are happy and you know it, how exuberant are you about life? I know that this is an area that I could use some work in from time to time. Are we happy to be alive no matter what is going on in our lives? No matter what the appearances may be, we are in the divine flow of goodness and that life in its fullness is showing up as us as you and as me, everywhere. Can we simply celebrate life today and be happy to be alive and living in a world that offers us so much goodness and so many ways to express goodness in our world? But what if you aren't feeling so exuberant or there are things going on in your life that bring you down? Maybe you just don't feel that great physically or maybe there is something going on in your life that is emotionally draining or disturbing to you. I know I've had this kind of distraction from the vibrancy of life at certain times. And when it happens, what works for me is to try to slow myself down. Like we just heard in that first song, slow down, stay in the moment, look at the things around for which there's so much gratitude for them. I notice these things. Many of these things are things that we I take for granted daily. Feeling gratitude for the people in our lives, for the many physical comforts that we experience in our homes every day. Something as simple as a comfortable place to sleep at night, being gratitude, being in gratitude for that, a clean, light, airy place to prepare our food being grateful for these. I notice these things and know that this is spirit showing up in my world. I noticed recently in a time when I was having trouble feeling love, that there was truly love all around me, that there were endless opportunities for me to receive and to give love. In the moment, no matter what is going on, I am okay. And I can celebrate the goodness of life and the promise that my natural state of being is that of health, of happiness, peace, love, abundance, and even joy. And that spirit is guiding me and directing me in the ways in my life that this will be my experience here on the physical plane, right here and right now. So I am happy to be alive, no matter what is going on. So let's celebrate life. Let's look for the good and for the God in every moment. As we do this, we're sowing the seeds of goodness that we will experience more and more along the way. All right. At this point, I'm going to transition into 
leading us into a spiritual mind treatment. So if you would just get comfortable in your seats, wherever you are, if you're there in person in the Garden Hills Recreation Center, if you're watching us from your own home, please get comfortable and just take some slow, deep breaths and know that as I give this treatment in the first person, please accept it for yourself. All right. Let us just relax and know that as we relax and know that we know that there is one, only one, only one presence, only one life, only one good. This is the unified oneness, the wholeness, the one, the one spirit that is everywhere present completely encompassing all of life. And I know for myself right here and right now that I am one with this presence. I am completely immersed in it. It fills me. It, it envelops me. It loves me. It protects me. And the, I am never separated from this presence. I am one with it completely right here and right now. As an, and as I know my oneness, I know that in truth, all is well in my life. I embrace this knowing that this presence, this spirit, this God loves me, protects me, guides me, only desires the very best for me and expresses through me as complete and total goodness of every kind. So as I know this, I know for myself that I am joy, that I am living in a body that is vibrantly healthy and that is continually renewing itself and healing itself and expressing vibrancy in greater and greater ways. I know that I am in the divine flow of good of every kind. I know that I am loved and supported. I know that I am divine energy and life expressing fully. I know that these things are the truth of who I am. And as I sink into this knowing with gratitude, I pay attention to the world around me. I see good everywhere I look and I am grateful. And this is what I focus my mind on, knowing that all is well. I turn away from any idea that I need to be sick, lonely, sad, unworthy, unhealthy, struggling, poor, lonely, any of those things. I just turn away from all of that. Instead, know that spirit only desires to express the best and the greatest through me and desires this for me in greater and greater ways. So this is my truth. My truth is divine, vibrant health. My truth is deep, abiding love. My truth is endless energy. It is opulent abundance. It is deep, loving relationships. And it is a life that is beautiful and worth living in every single way. So I'm grateful for this. I know that this is a great service today, that those of us who are tuned in, that we are tuned in to spirit, and that spirit speaks through this service, through every single thing that we hear and see. So we just embrace it and we are grateful for it. And I let it be so now. And so it is. All right. We're going to move into our song. It's called I Am So Happy by Denise Ganulin. So enjoy this. Bye, everybody. <laughs> I am so happy, I am so happy. 
so happy that's the word that's what we're saying today we're talking about happiness we've been talking about feelings all all month some people's favorite subject and some people's less than favorite subject that whole subject of happiness creates a whole lot of um, silliness sometimes because uh, we get the idea that pursuing happiness will get us what we want and if if we don't just try to be happy all the time somehow something's wrong with us Hopefully, uh, this crowd that's here knows better, but I want to talk about it a little bit anyway. So, being happy. How do you, how do you, what, what? You know, there are different ways to be happy. The, some, the, some of the silliness about it is that we try to be happy by ignoring what's going wrong. They call that bypass, and they call that denial. And, you, you, you know, you can be, you can have all sorts of stuff maybe underneath the surface, and yet you want to be happy, so you find ways to be happy anyway. Nothing wrong with that, except you sometime or other, you have to come back and take a look at what the real issues are inside of you, where you really are. Um, one of the ways that we try to be happy is to escape using diversions. My fa current favorite one is British television and the Swedish television. I love the Swedish shows. I can't understand the word of it, but I can read. And so I watch the, the subtitles and... You know, the, the police shows in these other countries, especially Europe, treat people very differently than police shows in this country. They don't all carry guns and they don't. And shooting is not the first option when problem solving. So I kind of love all that. And that's one of my diversions to get away from from stuff. And it makes me happy to do it. But the truth is, it doesn't really permanently make me happy and it doesn't take care of anything in the long run. It just gives me a way to sort of turn it all off every so often. Don't necessarily recommend it, but it works for me sometimes until it doesn't anymore. Um, you know, what that stuff does is, is just kicks off our endorphins. If we get things that get us excited and get moving like that song we just heard. Now, we are not a group that's ever been jump up in your seat and seek and dance and carry on. But where, where that's going on, one of the things that happens there is it kicks off your endorphins and it gets some excitement and some energy going. And that's all well and good. 
But that's not what we're about. We're about looking deeper. We're about looking behind that endorphin rush to the belief system, to the reality that's there, and to, to what is really generating our happiness and our joy. The other way to get happy is to have the right toys. You know, you know what they say, he who dies with the most toys still dies. And, and you know, if you have toys that just made you so happy when you got them, whether it was as a kid or a grown up, I have a, I have a convertible and boy, that's a cool toy. I loved it when I got it. It smelled new, even though it wasn't brand new, they had sprayed it so it smelled new. It was clean, it was sparkly. I could put the top down and drive up through the mountains in Colorado and it was my favorite toy. And then it wasn't anymore. It just, I got tired of the noise. I got tired of the wind in my hair and anybody else that rode with me not being able to have the top down because their hair went everywhere because they had it to do that with. And after, you know, and it's like anything that outside of us that we reach for to bring us happiness is, it does for a time, but only for a time. And then it, it wears out, it wears thin. You can only spray the new car smell in there so many times until it starts to stink. And, and it doesn't really carry forward. You know, and that isn't for anything that's bad about having stuff. Stuff is good. Stuff is important. I got stuff. But what it does tell us is there's something in us always wanting more, always wanting to be more, always wanting to do more, so that whatever we've created or manifested for ourselves in this moment is wonderful and new, but it's based on our past thinking and our past creating. And then once that's gone, what's next? What's new? We're always after more. We are eternal, always expanding beings. So the hunger for more, the desire to create more, to bring more into the world is always there. And so it is that those things may work for a while, but what we know is that there's another level that's more, more powerful and more lasting and can help us move more and more into that place of happiness or joy, as it were. One of those spiritual practices that we talk about a lot around here is gratitude. You know, I'm grateful. I can't tell you how grateful I am that we're all, that we're back here in person, as well as out there on the, on the airwaves to whoever's listening or, you know, whatever now or tomorrow or the next day. And as, as this continues to flow and go, we know that, that this expression is not limited to this time and this hour. I'm grateful that Jake's showing up to help me do this. I'm grateful for all of you for showing up. I'm great. There's so much to be grateful for. You know, if I were trying to do all this by myself, forget it. I'm grateful to Lynn for being the, the master of putting up signs and helping me. We, we hung the sign out front on, on intention. And I think that's the only thing holding it up. If the wind blows, we don't know what will happen, but it's up. You know, we create these new experiences. And there's so much gratitude, just the joy of doing that with someone else. After two years of being, for me at least, being isolated in our homes, it's been really wonderful to actually start to connect and be out here with people. And that gratitude brings me joy. And joy makes me happy. Setting intentions and seeing them come true makes me happy. You know what I'm talking about. If you're new in the teaching, you, you learn that setting intentions is one of the first steps. I intend, and you begin to believe in it, and you act as if. And as you do that, they, things start to have show up. I am first time I heard about a Celebar, the first time I saw uh, what happened out there, it was beyond my imagination that I could even do that. But I set an intention to be able to do it, and I did. Took a year. Took me accumulating some income. I set an intention this year that I want to go back to Mexico and I'm going on Wednesday. This thing opened up. I could do my work from down there for the rest of May without any problems because we're not meeting in person to get until June. And I have an open window, no other appointments that require my presence. And my good friend that lives down there sometimes has just gone back down there and blah, 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 all kinds of reasons. But I set that intention not knowing if I could even do it. I have enough frequent flyer miles. Staying down there is very inexpensive. And 
I know where to go to find the, the more inexpensive places. So I'm going to go live really well for two weeks, eating Mexican food in Mexico, which I love. It's my joy. It's so much fun. And that makes me happy. It makes me happy to see new things, experience new places, to get out of my everyday routine and my everyday space, which <clears throat> for me starts to disappear. I don't even see things anymore. You know that if you saw my, what a mess my house could get into when I don't see it anymore because I just don't notice. Whereas when I am in the newness of something new and seeing something new, then it's alive and I see it and I notice it. And time slows down. Have you ever noticed that? You just change your routine and time slows down. Hmm. So, you, so, so in, you get into this teaching, you start doing affirmations, you start seeing results, and you begin to grow from that. And you begin to get this wonderful notion that I oh, just changed my thinking, changed my life. And it happens. Except the thinking then has to go a little deeper. And that's usually accumulated by shift happening. You all know about shift? S-H-I-F-T. I have a great t-shirt from Team Camp where the F is made very, very small and the rest of it, the other letters are all there. I'll let you imagine what that looks like. Shift happens. Things come along and they, they just throw us all off of whack, all out of whack. All the things that we thought were just so smooth and easy, all of a sudden, boom, they're gone or they're changed. And then we have to dig deeper. Then we have to look deeper into ourselves to see what do I really believe about change? What do I really believe when bad things, quote, bad things happen or things I la label as bad? What kind of messages do I tell myself about who I am as a result of that? Do I want to make me wrong or bad or stupid? I have all those little messages that sometimes pop up. I heard them plenty of times back in my past. I get to choose whether I'm going to bring them into my present. And, and that's where the, the, the work becomes about returning to our joy, returning to our truth, returning more to who we are. And then we let it begin to grow. We turn back to gratitude. We turn back to setting intentions. We turn on to going forward in knowing who we are. You know, they say in all of your knowing, know yourself. That's, that's the key. That's the important part to really be willing to, to know the, yourself and to know the hard questions about yourself. You can't do that always by yourself. We do it in relationship. In fact, some of my best teachers in that kind of relationship are the people I did not get along with at all. Still don't. Because they were holding up a mirror to me of things I just as soon pretend aren't there like anger or controlling or any of those negative things I would call negative. But what those relationships do is give us the opportunity to change those things or to choose to operate in a different way. Instead of being victimized by our thinking, I get to decide about my thinking because we can choose what we believe and what we think. And that's what this whole teaching is about, is, is learning to choose, learning how we choose. How do we make that difference once we've chosen something different? What are the practices? How does it all go? How does it all work from there? So, so, so the, there's a wonderful philosopher that um, is not well known or talked about a lot. His name was, his name was um, Dr. Martin Larson, L-A-R-S-O-N. And he wrote a lot of books on new thought and about science of mind and other things. Um, he was born in 1897, so he's a bit older than I am and most of the rest of us. But he did a beautiful survey of all of the new thought teachings, starting with Swedenborg and coming forward, looking at all of the roots as they developed in different areas and different parts. And, and it's a fascinating, dense uh, academic book, history, um, where he go, goes back and not only talks about who the teach people were, but what they really believed and how the, how the various teachings kind of work together and fit together and where they agree and where they disagree and they diverge. And in one of his books called New Thought, um, and he calls New Thought a philosophy of health, happiness, and prosperity. And he says in that that the, the universal life, the life we all participate in, forever unfolds itself 
in all of the, its infinite evolutionary forces in the cosmic scheme of things, the big picture. And in its onward march evolves into higher and higher consciousness of intelligence in the successive growth of humankind. At the apex of this development, every human soul is an individualization of the universal being or all spirit, which we call God. So he's saying and has said what Holmes and many others say, and that is that the infinite, all of it, is available to each of us in our consciousness. And we have to be open and welcome and learning more about it. And he says it's there and it's pressing to be expressed. And then he says, which we call God and which can never be shorn of its powers, some old timey language, but like fire, which is its symbol, must always fully and perfectly be itself. The reason I wanted to share that with you is because I think that is a key and maybe the key to lasting happiness, maybe not lasting in terms of every minute of every day, but to, to return again and again and again to that place of happiness or that place of joy is to really and truly and deeply know yourself. Know what makes, makes you tick, knows what, what puts you together. There's an interesting uh, book and, and a whole lot of material now on the question of why. Why am I? Why am I doing what I'm doing? Why am I alive? The why being the deep question, and he talks about, the author talks about a, a, the golden circle. And the outside of the circle is the what. What's your life all about? What are you doing? What are your choices? Where do you go? How do you spend your time? All those things in the what area. And the next level in is the how. So how am I going to do that? Am I going to go to school? Am I not going to go to school? Am I going to, am I going to meditate every day? Am I not? Am I going <laughs> to disappear into television every night? Does that get me towards the what that I want? So we take a look at the why, what. But he says the key question is the why. Why are you being who you are? What is that deep why that calls you forward? And I got very clear about my why recently. You know, my, my why grows out of an experience of crisis, of shift, if you will. When my father died when I was young, very young, and he was young, he was 30, I was seven. I made a vow to myself that how, whatever number of years I had on the planet, that I would experience as much life and living as I possibly can could as, as it was, but can today. And that, that will shift and change and take on all kinds of different things. But that, that why, why do I do that? Because I want to live and I want to experience being alive. Something he did not have anymore and got taken away from him quite young. Quite young. He didn't want to give it up, didn't want to let it go. He didn't have a choice. At least not that he knew of at that point. So, so the idea is pay attention. What is your why? When you find yourself making choices, when you find yourself heading off to do this or that, there's some, and there's some wonderful stuff on the internet about finding your why. There's a book about it. There's all kinds of things where you can dig into what is my why? Why am I doing this? And once you have that clarity, it's easier then to recognize where you're going, what you're doing, and what you're what your challenges might be. And it's easier, I think, than to shift into a place of joy. When you know you're living your why, when you know you're living your why carried out as a what and a how, then that joy is just automatic. When you know who you are and what you're about, then you start to express that. And the feeling is just good. I feel good when I'm in that place of understanding myself. I'm not doing any of my old addictive behaviors to avoid it. And I allow myself to really be all of who I can be, then it's pretty amazing. You know, sometimes it takes some experimentation to find out what your why is and try different things in different places. Hmm. See, I don't believe that we that going after happiness as a as a thing has any huge true value for us in terms of lasting. I think what does 
is coming to know ourselves, understand ourselves, and as effectively as possible to, to live out of that place. And then the happiness is a byproduct. Because what happens when you're living your true self is there's a deeper joy when you're doing that thing which you know is what you're all about or you're being that thing which you want to be because it makes you happy or because it makes you feel good, it makes you feel connected to yourself, then, then the happiness will flow to the top and, and show up. Maybe not all the time, again, because how boring would that be? I don't want to be or do anything all the time. We would be in a pretty ba boring world if that were the case and we were still operating that way. What is real and what is true, though, is the happiness is a byproduct. It's a byproduct of our love for one another, our love for ourselves. What if you fell flat, head over heels in love with yourself instead of looking for someone out there to make you feel good? You know, it's always been interesting to me in working with couples, and especially during breakups and such. I seem to be more of an expert at that. I... Uh, I've worked with that one a lot. And, and I, you know, one of the important pieces is recognizing all that wonderful, gushy, falling in love, fabulous feeling that you get from that. It's inside of you. You didn't get it from the other person. You got it because it's alive and well in you. And you hold on to it by continuing to do the things that keep that alive and well for you. And you get to involve the other person if they want to still be involved. And, and when we realize that, then we don't lose anything. You know, love is, is, is not one directional. Love doesn't go anywhere. I love that phrase. Uh, one, of my, one of my most wonderful teachers passed away recently, uh, J. Scott Neal. And one of, his, one of his phrases was, love doesn't go anywhere. It just is. It's all around us. It's who we are. It's at our depth. And when we are living in that awareness and in that place, whether the love is about us, about others, about the universe, about the world, then the joy can come forward. Then the happiness begins to show up as a byproduct. It comes from living from self-knowledge and freedom. Freedom for me is a real driven driver. You know, I, I love my freedom. I love the freedom to be and do and go and, and live and choose. All of that, all of that that comes with it. And, and that freedom then allows me huge gratitude and huge joy. So there's a lot of different ways to do this. People measure it with individual stories. If you if think about your story in relationship to some larger story, perhaps the hero's journey, which is all about that journey to the self and, and the going out and coming back and the going out and coming back, the circling and circling. What are the dragons you may face along the way? They're just dragons. They're not, not going to do you in because you're the hero in the story. You'll always be unfolding and coming back. Many of the understandings of mythology, the Christian myths, the, the Buddhist and, and Hindu myths, one of the powerful ways of dealing with those is, is to look at yourself and your life and if it fits in any one of those stories in any way. It can give you greater insight into who you are. I'm currently working with a group as a, as a participant where we are embracing and, and, and asking to embrace our avatars, that idea within us that, that is reflected in some particular spiritual or heroic kind of person. And some people have avatars that are Hindu gods I'd never heard of. Some have Christian kinds of avatars. And some of the group have superhero avatars. And, and they, they're very meaningful and powerful when you start thinking about yourself in light of these bigger stories. Because then there's a different meaning and deeper meaning that you can find. And it's all about bringing us back to ourselves, back to our self-understanding, so that we can live more freely out of who we are instead of in spite of who we are. The last thing I want to say about this is the, that you have got a built-in success where this is concerned. The success is there's a power within you 
that guides you even when you don't know it. This book I just quoted from, I bought, I'm not sure how many years ago. It caught my attention on a shelf because it said New Thought. I bought it. I haven't looked at it since then. It's been sitting on my shelf. Yesterday, two days ago, I walked by it and I thought, I need to read that. And I pulled it off the shelf. Little did I know it would hit me this morning that I needed to look at it and see if it might have a word for today's talk. And sure enough, first page I opened to, there it was. Now, is that my wisdom? Yeah. Is it an infinite wisdom? Yeah. Is it a both and? Yeah. Because there is a wisdom within us that is not separate from us in any way, but is the guiding truth of who we are and in the, in the world in which we live. And that's what we have to trust rather than something that comes from outside of us and suddenly overwhelms us and gives us whatever. It makes us want to jump up and dance and sing. But it's that within us that makes us want to jump up and dance and sing or to very quietly, joyfully live our lives. So whatever that is for you, whatever direction that is, then I would remind you that you are wonderful. And so am I. And so it is. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Today's affirmation, I'm happy to be alive, living a joyful life. And if you ever had a brush with death, then you know that happy to be alive is a really important thing. So today I want to just uh, share a word or two about prosperity. We are, as you know, meeting both here and online. And I want to thank those of you, many of you, who are contributing so much to assist us here with, um, with doing that. Uh, it costs more money now that we're back in place and in person. And I am so, I say back, we're not back at anywhere. We're going forward into an in-person experience. And I'm so grateful for the contributions. We've already had quite a few right here today, this morning, and the others that will come in online and continue to come in online. So, I'm, I, you know, we are a center that believes in prosperity and believes in freedom and believes in giving. If you want to, to double up your income, then double up your giving. It's an easy, simple formula. Don't talk, I'm not talking about giving stuff you don't have. I'm talking about that you can within your, your means. So if you will, join me in our affirmation of prosperity, which goes like this. I live in a universe of abundance. As I freely and joyfully give, I join in the divine flow, and all that I share with life returns to me multiplied abundantly. And so it is. And now for some announcements. I guess I'm... And it's time for everybody's favorite fun game, Announcements, Announcements, Announcements. Hey, stay in touch with the Center for Spiritual Living Midtown through our newsletter. Get one email a week, letting you stay informed. And please subscribe when visiting YouTube to our YouTube channel. Those subscriptions go a long, long way. And while you're on your social media, why not give us a like and a share on Facebook? Let your friends know what we're doing. Invite them to come watch our services with you. And join us on our Zoom room throughout the week. We offer a variety of Zoom interaction opportunities each and every week here as part of the Center for Spiritual Living Midtown. 10 a.m. Sunday is our discussion group around the 365 Science of Mind book. Every Sunday, 12 noon Sundays, our community fellowship immediately following our Sunday services. And 12 noon on Tuesday our online empowerment opportunity. The access room information remains the same for all of our Zoom experiences. If you need access, please visit cslmidtown.org and you'll find access information on our website. Join us on any of our Zoom opportunities throughout the week. And while you're with us, be sure to connect with one of our professional practitioners. These are folks that are highly trained to support you along your spiritual journey. 
You can learn more on our website about our professional practitioners. Just head over to cslmidtown.org, click on About and Practitioners. Then you'll see their bios and a way to reach them and learn a little bit more about each of them. And please send us your prayer requests. Click on the Home tab and look for Affirmative Treatment Prayer Requests. Fill out the form, send it off, and get our professional practitioners praying for you each and every day. So thank you for being here with, and being with us. Um, our next time to be a hybrid uh, celebration, which means in person and online, will be the first Sunday in June. We'll do this the first Sunday of June and, this, and the third Sunday of June. And uh, beyond that, the board will make a decision as to how often as we continue to go and grow. I invite you to bring your friends, let people know we're here and we're doing this and, and you know, drag them along because I think they might find something good. My first time, I was drag kicking and screaming into the Science of Mind Center, and, and here I am. So I'm very grateful for that person that dragged me here. So knowing that, join me, if you will, in our closing, because there is something better to know than what we have known yet. So I leave this place now knowing something better than I knew before. I go forth into the world with a heart full of love and a mind full of good sense. I look at the world in a better way, knowing that I have within me everything I need to create the life I desire. I give thanks for this understanding, and I am grateful for the spirit of life that lives through me. And so it is. So once this StreamYard broadcast is done, join us, if you will, on Zoom, and we'll see what we can do to uh, have some communication between those in the room and those on Zoom. <laughs>